So for the second part of the tutorial, what we're going to do is to actually use our ROM file, which could be on, uh, could be saved as an MCP file, as a mocap file, or as a VDF. Uh, it doesn't matter. What we need is uh, the markers that are in our actor and uh, labels on those markers. So I'm going to simply drag and drop the file here, and then I'm going to see what I have inside the file and uh, the first thing you'll notice is that in the beginning of the frame when we, re when we recorded the ROM there was no data until the actors in the TIFOs and all the labels are set in place. So for that reason I'm just going to move my playhead and my play start all the way to where there is data that I can use. And there you go. So a few things that we don't need here in the view filters. I'm just going to uncheck the labeling. Okay. So the next thing to do is to remove the calibration, uh, the, the, sorry, the solving setup that we have from that actor because we're not going to use this solving setup. We're going to use the custom one that we just did in the previous step. So I'm going to get rid of it by clicking this button and now we have our scene with simply just the markers and labels that we need um, in our actor. Okay, so now let's import the VSS that we have. Open that and there you go. One thing to notice is that it won't, it won't have the the skin. Uh, we need to add the FBX of our custom character in the location of the skin. If you don't know where that is, you can always go to General Preferences and then check where it says Skins. So I'm going to click an open folder and then copy that location, close this, close that, open it in Explorer. And I'm gonna copy here what I have from here, which is what you will have if you're following along. So those two folders. Close that, close that, and now if I select my if I select my skin, there we go. But we'll have Juliet break. So simple as that. If you don't see anything or if you see something very strange, maybe it's because you have the wrong skin selected. Okay, so now let's select a root. Let's change our manipulator here. I'm going to translate it to where the actor is. We need to rotate our character. So let me just go here in the channels, take a look at what I'm doing. Me too. Oh, by the way, if the manipulators are too small for you, you can always press plus or minus to make them bigger or smaller. So we need to rotate it in the Z axis and probably 90 degrees. Yeah, 90 degrees is fine. Let me just type that here. 90. Perfect. Okay, and the next step is to start posing her. So for this particular case, I'm going to start with the knees, but if you can see, if you look closer, she's still not quite in the middle. So I'm just going to place her in the middle. What we're trying to find here is a pose where the shoulder markers and the waist markers and the knee markers are uh, relatively close to where they would be in my uh, skeleton. So uh, it will not be perfect. It's, it's too hard for it to be perfect, but we're gonna try our best. So let me see, a little bit backwards probably. If you look to the, uh, at the top view, you might want her a little bit farther back. So let's rotate it a little bit more. A little bit more too. 
Now something very important to mention is that when we go up, like uh, the knee markers are perfectly fine there, but when we go up, so we don't know if the problem with the character is uh, about scaling or if the markers were in place in the right position of our actor. It is more likely that yes, the markers were placed in the right position, but the bone length of uh, Juliet of these custom FBX is uh, smaller than our actor. So, let me just choose that for a little bit. So, what to do then? Well, it depends. If you want to change the length of the bone, you can, but at that point, you're going to be changing the length of uh, specific bones of your character, of your FBX, uh, of your solving skeleton, and it won't match anymore the length of the bones in your FBX. And that might be a problem, because if you record with that data and the bone lengths in your solving skeleton don't match the ones on your FBX, then you're going to have to undo that uh, length in post. So if you change the length of the bones, then make sure that it's only for a preview of the, of the character. And then you're going to have to solve that problem uh, using a retargeting program or uh, a different method. Okay. And in this case, even if we change uh, the, the length of the bones here, we'll be just changing the keys. So to change the length of the bones, if that's something that you want, you'll have to select the base pose manipulator and then you could actually uh, translate that bone, right? But you do not want to do that unless it's only for previews and you don't care about how you're going to solve the problem of a, of a longer bone in post. I'm going to control Z and undo that. Okay. So um, going back, I'm not going to do uh, a base pose here. So keep rotating and putting it in, in place where the markers uh, are. And here, remember that we turn off the degrees of freedom for the shoulder uh, on the X and the Y. Well, in here, we should be respecting the degrees of freedom that we set in the, in the previous step. So in this case, we should always be moving the Z axis there. Okay, so now this is the perfect example. It's too high up, right? So what, what do we do? Do we want to move it maybe a little bit like that? Well, again, we should be always respecting degrees of freedom. So no, I'm going to control Z that. And then what we should do instead is to grab the previous bone and rotate that bone in order to move it up or down, because this bone actually has uh, the three degrees of freedom available for us to move. So if we needed to go up or down, we should be rotating that bone, right? Because it's something that you can actually do. You can move it up or down by rotating your shoulder, but you can't move your, uh, your elbow like that or like that. At that point is your hand that's moving up or down, not your, not your elbow. So that's a little trick there for you. Um, okay, so move that and then the hand as well. You should be moving it up. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now let's do the other one. And remember, because your actor is in a T-pose, there is a chance that the clavicles are moving up. So we move this ones by minus five on the y-axis, we should be moving these ones as well. So minus five on the y-axis. Okay. And here, let's move it up. And let's take a look at the elbow. Same thing, should be rotating only on the z-axis. If we need to, we rotate the shoulder. There we go. And 
Now we can move the hand. So we have the base, uh, the, the T pose of our character. Uh, I didn't take a look at the head, but it looks like it's the markers are close enough to where they would be if I had a solving skeleton like that. So yeah, okay. So now what do we do? We have a, a VSS in the right pose, but we still don't have markers that will tell the bones in which way it will move. So we need to attach the markers to the bones and create solving constraints. Okay, so let's move on to attaching the markers and creating the solving constraints. Mm -hmm.